Okay, so how to overcome your porn addiction, how to improve your relationships, how to lower your social anxiety, how to lower your anxiety in general, how to increase your happiness, your connections, your self-esteem, uh, and much more. So I'll start off with this video, I'll start off telling you how, how my day went today, because a lot of what I'm gonna say will give you some tips on how you can improve, improve your life. So I woke up this morning, guys, I'll be honest, and um, I had uh, some anxiety in the morning. It's quite common that I get morning anxiety. Most of it's just um, just the natural anxiety with how the day's going to go, life, etc. And some of the anxiety was around um, me not going to the gym because going to the boxing gym means a lot for me. It's something that I enjoy, I love. That's why I talk about it a lot on this channel. I post up clips of me training down the gym to motivate and inspire men to give it a try. Uh, obviously without, well I'm not going to force anyone to do anything against um, their own wishes but just to share something that's changed my life and has continued. So my anxiety was a bit of a battle of um, you know getting past the snooze button, getting out of bed, showering, getting my gym kit ready and getting past, past my resistance and I, I did a little post on my, on my Instagram story today saying get past morning resistance. So anyway, got myself down, down the gym. I had, a, I had a fantastic session today. All the sessions really go well, but I really enjoyed it today. Left the gym today in a great mood. Um, walked back home, and I bumped into to an old friend of mine who actually, it's a crazy story, but he went out looking, uh, looking for me today just by chance. We bumped into each other, and he said to me, you know, can, I, can we go for a coffee? And I said, yeah, of course, of course, for sure. So we went for a coffee, and uh, we, we had a great chat. We always have good chats. Uh, genuine, honest chats, some of the best conversations, you know, between between friends, uh, between men. So we we talked about various different things, you know, dating, uh, investing, uh, you know, connecting, sports, boxing, different things. And one of the things that he, he brought up to me was he said to me, you know, when he, he he likes the videos that I do on um, combating porn addiction. And actually, this is a crazy story. My friend was working. Doing, you know, working with with a customer, and one of his customers was a father with a son, uh, and this this man's son actually said to my friend, they didn't he didn't know that he didn't, they knew me. Oh, Johnny Baba says you shouldn't watch porn. So this little kid, like his his father, um, they knew me from from watching my videos, um, and my friend was uh, he was he was really moved by that, obviously because they didn't know that I was a close friend of his, if that makes sense. So anyway, he got talking to me about those videos and, and I said, you know what, I'll be honest with you, I've always had a little bit of a of a, a, a conflict with making those videos because it's a subject which is um, not easy to talk about, it's not easy for me to talk about, it's a sensitive subject and I know it does offend some people. Some people see the videos that I do and they feel judged, they, they feel like I'm making a video and I'm calling them out, and, I, and I'm not doing that. But obviously, if you don't know me and you don't know what my message is, it's like anything online. You can easily read a, read a title of a video, and it can trigger you. So for a while, I was, I was thinking I might stop doing videos on that. I might just leave that and you know cover the topics where, where I'm an expert in. But having, having given it some consideration and thought, uh, and a friend of mine was saying, no, you should always do those videos, you know, because we all battle with it. And as I've said before, for anyone who doesn't understand why I make those videos and thinks that I'm judging people, I'm not judging any man for, for watching porn. Because first and foremost, I've watched it myself. I've had, I've had problems with it as well. But I've made, you know, I've succeeded with it in my life as well. And I like to make a point of saying that to give other men confidence that they can do it and also be honest about my struggles. So... It's, there's, there's no, um, you know, judging from me, and I don't walk up to people, random strangers, and tell them that you should, they shouldn't watch porn. Um, obviously, a lot of you ask me to to make a video on this, and and I go into many positive ways in how you can overcome it, and and I talk about social anxiety as well. So I will keep doing the videos, um, especially as long as I'm um, staying strong and not going near it. But it's, um, it's a challenging thing, especially in, in today's world. I've said in one of the videos I've done before, back in the day, 
porn wasn't as difficult. It was it was it was easier not to watch it, and and the obvious reason is because it wasn't so available back in the day. I remember there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't internet, there weren't all these sites, and today you you don't even have to go looking for it. It comes looking for you. Adverts come up, all of these sometimes these you know these porn sites come up and they try and trick you into clicking on the links, and sometimes people send you links, people's. Um, you know, Facebook accounts get hacked. It's happened to mine, and people send out uh, these types of videos. So it's it's a lot harder today. Back in the day, the only way that you could watch porn, you had to go like down to the video shop and and hire it. And I back personally, I, I was too embarrassed to do that. Most people, or well, a lot of us, were as kids. So when I first got introduced to it, it was like a friend had a you know had a VHS tape or a magazine. So. It wasn't as available as, as it is today, so it's, it's harder today to stay away from it. But anyway, rather than focus on the problem, I'd rather focus on the solution. So today I had a brilliant day, and it was for two obvious reasons. One is because I went down and trained in the gym. I exercised, which is part of my principles, more of my Evolve teaching, and I socialized. And I was with a friend for about four hours. We had coffee. We had, we had a long chat, went for a walk, and we, we went for Nando's, we went for food, and I've come back home. And it just reminds me of the old days, guys. You know, these are things that were just, we just did. And sometimes when I'm, I think, shall I bother making this video? Because it's, it's almost so obvious. I don't, like, will it really help people? But then another part of me thinks that I should make this video, I should keep with this message because it's important, because... All, most of the good things we know, guys, but we don't apply them. And especially today with post-COVID and with so much, you know, this is, today everything's about online. People are addicted to it, myself included. So sometimes we have to be reminded that meeting up and having fellowship and meeting with friends in person, just simple things, not rocket science, changes your life. And, and that, these two things for me personally, these help you to stay away from porn. Because, you know, to state the obvious, or maybe not to some, it's, 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 it's hard to not watch porn if you're at home all day, you're not exercising, you don't have any friends, or you're not going out, you're not meeting up with friends, you're not having real time with people. You're more vulnerable, you're more prone to get tempted and to have that thirst, have that appetite to go and watch it. And as we know, when you watch it, it makes you feel good for about a few minutes, if that. And then you feel exhausted after lethargic. You don't want to socialize. And then, you know, your whole outlook on yourself and relationships, it just, um, it's not good long term. So um, if anything from this video, I try and encourage you, watch this video. Just try it. Just go and do a session in the boxing gym and then go and meet up with a friend. See how much more confident you feel. And I think there's so many important things I, I want to mention today. A lot of men today feel like they're not good enough, they don't have any value to offer, right? But when you meet up with friends and you have a good connection and you have a good time and you spend time with people that you care about, it reinforces that you are valuable, that everyone's got value. And it's got nothing to do with how much money you got. It doesn't, it, it, that's got nothing to do with it. You don't need to be famous, you don't need to have followers online, you don't need to be a celebrity. Just, you, you're just you as a person, without sounding naive, I'm not sounding naive or, or cheesy, just being kind and just sharing your time with friends, it reinforces that you're both valuable. And when you get that connection and then you go back home, you don't, the last thing I feel like doing now is watching porn. I don't need to watch it. I don't want to watch it. It's going to do nothing for me. I don't have that, that, um, that hunger, that thirst. But if I don't go out, if I keep staying at home week in, week out, and I don't go to the gym, and I isolate myself from people, and I just go online, I'm just staying on YouTube, Instagram, Netflix, if I'm just doing that all day, the, the likelihood is I'm going to be tempted to watch porn um, because you, you're not getting that connection. And I've realized with human connection, it's something that you have to be regularly getting. You can't just socialize once a year and go, yeah, I've got human connection. And then for the rest of the 11 months, I think people, most people will know that now of what we've been through um, with the COVID. So I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm preaching because I'm not preaching, but I'm sharing something that personally has changed my life. And someone who's gone through anxiety, mental health, social anxiety, depression, addiction, 
I'm, I'm doing pretty good and, and I would like everyone who follows me, especially the good hearted people, for you to be doing good as well and, and feeling that, that, that feeling of love, that feeling of confidence, of strength, of optimism, where you feel good, you feel good about life, you feel good about the next day. Honestly, man, you know, we took this for granted back in the day because in my day, you know, all the computers were great, but obviously we didn't have the internet. We had Commodore, Mega Drive, Nintendo, and that was fun, you know, but we would play video games in a house together. So, you know, like four friends would come to my place and, um, you know, we'd play video games. My mum would make dinner, my dad, and I'd go to my friends, we'd play games. So it was, it was a social thing. But I think today, the generation today is just becoming more and more anti-social. Listen, I'm not, I'm not one of these, I'm not the older generation that's saying we should get rid of social media because social media, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things to it. You know, I, I love YouTube. And I love what I'm doing now, doing these videos. But what, what I'm trying to say is, it's a balance. Yeah, it's okay to go on social media for five, six hours a day, which is what most people do on average, even more. But you gotta have time in person. And I've noticed the more happier I am in my life, is always, is always the, the more I'm socializing, obviously with, with good people and going to the gym. So if you go to the gym and you socialize several hours, a couple of times a week or even every other day, you don't really feel those negative effects of going online. You can actually enjoy that time. But when you spend all your time online and you just push everyone away, it's so hard to quit porn because porn becomes like, it's not a real friend, but it becomes like a best friend. It's that crutch, it's that, li it's that little bit of safety. But as we know, it's not the real thing. So, you know, my message is a really good message. I think it's even more crucial uh, with the time that we're living in now, especially for sufferers um, like a lot of us, myself, who are prone to mental illness, and we have anxiety. We have anxiety. We need to be. We need. We need that good therapy. We need to be in the gym, exercising a couple of times a week. And so, I'm not saying every day, guys. I'm not being unrealistic, but at least, at least once or twice a week. You meet up with a friend. I'm not talking about for 10 minutes, like three, four hours where you can have a good chat. And, and it is like therapy, you know. That's why it's been said in, you know, I'm not getting preachy, but it says it in the Bible. It says it in any, anything with any real wisdom. Anyone with any intelligence will say the importance of fellowship, of friendship. And unfortunately today, you know, the type of friendships that most people are um, going about is not real. It's not real. I, if I spend my life, you know, having cyber friends, I'm going to be in a pit of depression. It's going to drive me into darkness. So I've learned from experience that you, you've got to, you've got to meet in person. You've got to seek out social groups and, you know, get in touch with a friend. And I, and I understand because I've experienced it myself where you've got to face that anxiety, that fear of reaching out and, and, and meeting up with people. And it's, it's the best feeling in the world, man. There's, there's, nothing that, there's nothing that can replace that. As good as Netflix can be, and I love YouTube, and I love watching boxing and films and sports and, and, and the music, that could never compete with spending time with family in person, meeting up with a friend, especially um, if you've got a girlfriend or if you're dating a, a lovely woman. You just can't be, you can't get that from a machine. The machine can't love you, unfortunately. Can't give you a hug when you, when you feel down. It, well, I mean, obviously, I can make you laugh with my videos, but in general, it, it, it's, it's limited. In, in all of its great technological advancements, cannot give you human connection. And I think today we all need to be re reminded of that. And sometimes I, I forget that. And it has to be reinforced by getting down the gym. So if some of you wonder, why do I keep repeating the same things in my videos? It's because it needs to be repeated. Because I understand what I've been like at times when people have given me good advice, especially the older generation, I, it takes, sometimes I've got to hear it 20 times before I finally apply it. So that's why for critics who criticize my videos, criticize me for constantly talking about anxiety, porn addiction, because it's, um, it, it takes time. It takes time for it to affect people. But the fact that there's been so many positive people that write to me around the world saying, your videos, especially the ones you do on porn addiction, have really helped me to overcome it or to seek out more friendships, more relationships. And that's really the answer. 
um, if you're really struggling with this addiction and you don't want to be and you want to overcome it, you've got to make more friendships. Or with the existing friendships that you've got, you know, you've got to regularly meet up because there's one thing saying that you've got friends. Everybody can have friends. But if you don't got if you don't meet up with them in person, if I'm being honest, it's just it's just as good as not having a friend. What's the point of having a friend if you don't meet with them in person at least once a month? And I understand people that might say, well, all my friends live abroad. That's different. I understand that. Then obviously you've got to use Zoom or video call. I get that. But if you've got friends that live in the same country as you and they live, you know, in a radius where you can meet up, then you've got to um, you've got to take that next step. And I know it can be hard because I've been through what all of you guys go through and are going through when you've got anxiety, especially social. It can paralyze you, but you've got to face that fear if you want to grow and be happy. You've got to give something to get something back. And that what you've got to give is your courage. You've got to exercise your courage. Otherwise, you're just going to be stuck in the addiction, not just of pornography. That's just a consequence, but depression. And no one wants to be there. I don't wish that on anyone, even though um, I, ha I have said before, depression can be a blessing in disguise in the long run. But it's not exactly something that you wish people to go through in order to learn the value of meeting up. But yeah, I'm just reciting something that's important today. I don't hear many people online talking about it. What's the, ir the irony is with all the inter intelligent people we've got today and the education system with the universities and all these people that are qualified, how many of them are saying what I'm saying, which is common sense, that people, men, women, especially the younger generation, need to come off of social media for a couple of hours a week and they need to get down to a local boxing gym or the local community or whatever. They need real connection. You can't keep being online and having this cyber um, relationship and then start wondering why you're getting mental health problems when you're down. You're going to get mentally ill. You know, we're not built to be on machines 24 hours a day. So I'm not saying we should outrule it because it's benefited me in many ways. It, it helped me to build a business, a platform, reach people creatively, it's given me an outlet. So I'm, I've always been grateful for what YouTube's gave me and the internet. But at the same time, you need a balance. You've got to socialize. I, I would say these are not exact figures, but just off the top of my head, at least 40% of your interactions need to be real with real people in real time, e even 50%. But I know most people, their balance is completely the other way. They're probably 90% of their time is cyber relationships, which is not real, and the other 10%. So we can learn something from the past. I'm not saying we've got to go back to the Stone Age because, like I said, there's a lot of benefits that social media does. It can help you to reach... Like I've been able to reach people in countries that I could never have reached because I can't travel every part of the world. It's quite unlikely, right? only got so much time but with my videos and with the technology I can I can reach people but it has its limits and I think you sometimes we've got we have to wake up this generation has to wake up if it wants to it start improving and be happy it's a simple message and it doesn't cost any money it's just a little bit of um, discipline and just having the um, yeah just having the discipline and as I said as kids when I was younger we didn't really have we didn't have to be reminded this that's all we did we played football we went cinema, we were always socialising, there was always a community spirit. But today it feels like, uh, certainly in London and England, it just feels like there's no community spirit. It just feels like it's, it's just broken, disconnected. That's why so many people are unhappy. That's why in times of my life I've been unhappy. I can thankfully say this is like the happiest I've been in a long time and it's because I've been uh, in the boxing gym and, um, and socialising and reaching out and getting um, real connection so um, yeah let me know your thoughts in the box below but you know I, I guarantee there's millions of people that are feeling the way I'm feeling or, and they've, they've had this conversation in private they haven't extended it so hopefully this video can, um, can make a difference so that's my answer that's my kind of new solution to getting over porn addiction anxiety depression two simple things exercising and socializing and both in real time, not Cybex, not sitting in your room watching a video on an app and doing star jumps. No, that's, that's not going to do it. 
going to a gym with real people and training and getting to know them, having conversations, building relationships and meeting up with friends and having dinner, having coffee, having a good time. Simple, all right? Like, share, subscribe. Fearless.